In 1986, singer-songwriter Paul Simon released a song called Graceland and how he's going to the said location. Many believe he's talking about Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee, even as going as far as citing the next line in the song. But honestly, that seems like conjecture. I think he's actually talking about visiting an iconic Chicago landmark. Graceland Cemetery, located in the Uptown neighborhood just one block north of Lakeview, is perhaps Chicago's most well-known cemetery. It is the final resting place of many prominent figures in Chicago history. So let's check it out. Graceland Cemetery was opened in 1860 and designed as a cemetery that can double as a regular park that people could walk around in or have picnics in. It was also a way to move some of the dead from a crowded and now defunct city cemetery, which was in where Lincoln Park is today. The cemetery stretches from Irving Park Road up to Montrose Avenue. While the park is currently in the confines of the community area known as Uptown, Graceland Cemetery wasn't originally established in the city of Chicago. It was part of a township named Lakeview, which encompassed Fullerton to Devon Avenue. The area would later become annexed into Chicago in 1889. It's almost a shame, really. That Lakeview place really sounded interesting. Today, the cemetery features elaborate and interesting memorials for the departed that make it a popular destination for tombstone tourists and curious visitors. One of which is near the southern entrance called Eternal Silence. The statue guards resident Dexter Graves, fitting last name. Some even believe the sculpture is haunted. The Getty Tomb on the north side of the cemetery is a beautiful tomb commissioned by businessman Henry Harrison Getty for his wife Carrie Eliza Getty. It was designed by someone else who is buried here and will be discussed later. The Inez Clark statue is a life-size memorial honoring a six-year-old girl who passed away in the late 19th century. There is a lot of folklore surrounding the statue, including some speculation that it may be haunted. Because of this, it's a popular grave to visit. Many guests even bring gifts, like toys, for her. On top of beautiful designs and landscapes, the cemetery is the resting spot of the who's who of Chicago's history. Names you may recognize from other places in the city or in Illinois in general. It shows how interconnected many Chicago stories are. Potter Palmer, a businessman who got his start selling dry goods. He is largely responsible for shaping State Street in the loop into what it is today. Like his name suggests, he is responsible for both versions of the Palmer House Hotel, pre and post Chicago Fire. He is buried with his wife Bertha in a temple-inspired monument. Louis Sullivan, an architect whose contributions to the Chicago School of Architecture dubbed him the father of skyscrapers by some. He also designed the previously mentioned Getty Tomb. In fact, it was one of his early works that really put him on the map. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, whose less is more philosophy shaped much of modern architecture, one of his famous works is the Farnsworth House in Plano, Illinois, former country home of Edith Farnsworth, a prominent Chicago doctor in a time where women doctors were not that common. She also happens to be buried here at Graceland. Cyrus McCormick, inventor of the Mechanical Reaper, which would significantly impact agriculture as we know it today. His family would carry on his legacy, becoming one of the wealthiest families in the country. One of his great nephews, Robert Rutherford, a former Chicago Tribune president and World War I veteran, founded Cantini in Wheaton and is the namesake of the McCormick Place in the near south side. The building echoes Mies van der Rohe's modernist style. Marshall Field, another Chicago titan, founded Marshall Field & Company with the help of Potter Palmer. It was a major former nationwide department store chain who had a flagship store on State Street, which is now a Macy's. The company was also responsible for the construction of the Merchandise Mart. Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub himself, played at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field from 1953 to 1971 as the shortstop for the Cubs. He was the first African-American player for the team. Banks was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1977. Roger Ebert, one of the most influential film critics in the country. In fact, he was the first person to win a Pulitzer Prize for film criticism. On top of his successful standalone career, he also made TV programs with other such critics as Gene Siskel and Richard Roper. No relation. Daniel Burnham, who was buried on an island with his wife, was an architect and city planner whose influence was felt in many locations in the city. He designed such buildings as Union Station, the Monadnock Building, and Marshall Fields. Perhaps his most iconic building is the Flatiron Building in New York City. But this isn't checking out New York City, is it? This is checking out Chicago. His famous 1909 plan of Chicago would not fully come into fruition, but inspired places such as Grant Park, the Riverwalk, and Navy Pier. John Peter Altgeld, former governor of Illinois. Philip Armour, who founded Armour & Company, one of the country's largest meatpacking businesses in its early days. His company made up a good percentage of the workers at the infamous Union Stockyards. 
But perhaps the most infamous resident of Graceland is George Pullman, industrialist, inventor of the sleeping car, and founder of the worker town of Pullman, which later got incorporated into Chicago becoming its 50th community area. Alongside the neighborhood, his namesake was also lent to another major artifact of Chicago, the Pullman Strikes. This is a long and detailed story that would be better suited for another time. So to keep things short, Pullman's working and living conditions were unsatisfactory, leading to one of America's most important labor strikes. After two months of striking and 30 strikers dead, due to clashes with state and federal troops, people were not happy with Pullman. When George Pullman passed away three years later, he was buried here at Graceland Cemetery. Because of his poor reputation, his steel coffin was encased in a block of concrete and railroad ties. This was in fear from his family that his body would be tampered with. The list of iconic Chicago figures goes on and on and on. I could probably be here all day, but I think I will leave it with that. Graceland Cemetery is an important part of Chicago and could be described as a living, breathing Chicago history book with how many important people were laid to rest here. Hey, you know why they put fences around cemeteries? It helps prevent vandalism and keeps wild animals from roaming the premises. And I guess people are just dying to get in. I'm Oliver Roper, and this is Checking Out Chicago.